back guys to another episode of Central Oregon Shenanigans. Today we are working on the 429 build. Yes, we're getting right into part two. And as you can see in the background, there's something shiny and, well, it's a, not shiny and beautiful. Well, it is shiny and beautiful, but it's inside the box. We left off with putting, installing the crankshaft, checking tolerances, and uh, now today we're going to be installing the camshaft. If you have the camshaft already and you're building one of these motors, put the camshaft in first, not the crank. I didn't have the camshaft here, so it's here. It's on the workbench, so let's get started. Before we get started, though, I would like to give my good little buddy Zane over at HodgePodge Dodge Garage a little shout out. If uh, you get done watching this video and you want uh, another good channel to go follow and um, you want something to watch, uh, go check out Zane at HodgePodge Dodge Garage. He just picked up a 1975 or 76 F600 lifted on huge mud tires, flatbed, canary yellow. You can't miss it. Go check out Zane, HodgePodge Dodge Garage. And also, if you're tuning into my videos for the first time, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Turn on that notification bell. And uh, hit the like button. Drop a comment down below. Alrighty, guys. So inside this box is going to be our cam kit from Comp Cams. This, is a, this isn't the most extreme cam you can order through Comp. Uh, they they make an extreme off road. This one's still a high energy cam. This is going to give us a really nice dance. It's also going to give us um, <clears throat> if you go with the sh extreme comp cam, uh, the extreme off road. It probably would have been fine. I think we could have made the engine just run, just behave itself, just just good, just as good as this one. But I know with this cam right here, with the Edelbrock carburetor that we have the performer intake manifold, this cam setup with valve springs, uh, with those heads up on the shelf, we're going to be almost tipping 400 horsepower out of this engine. That's that's plenty. So with that being said, guys, yeah, we're, we're shooting for like a three, between 365 and 375. If we could get up, you know, 395 horse, uh, we'll, be, we'll be right in my ballpark where I want to be. So inside of here... I already opened this up and I, I took all the, they had it really nicely packed. Um, we got valve locks. We got new valve seals, which we're going to be putting in. Even though our heads got rebuilt, I don't know how long they sat. I'm just going to do the valve seals. Steel retainers for pump cams. We've got new lifters which we're going to be finding a nice little container to put these lifters in today on this episode to get these uh, ready to go in the engine. We're going to let these soak for probably two. I'm going to go two days I'll soak on these before we put them in the engine. We'll talk about that later. We've got new valve springs. Brand new valve springs. <clears throat> We have brand new valve springs in the heads we have over there, but they're just stock, and I, these are a little bit more high performance valve spring. We've got ourselves a comp cam dual, dual teeth, dual tooth uh, timing set. And we're gonna go over this. I do believe this is an adjustable timing set. It's a high energy timing set. And then we have our high energy cam. Now, aver advertised duration on this camshaft is 268 intake, 268 exhaust. Uh, duration is 219 on the intake and 219 on the exhaust. Uh, valve lift is 0.494. So. Need the instructions. Uh, we are also came, this didn't come in the kit, but I ordered this. This is the Comp Cams cam and lifter installation lube. So you probably could get away with Royal Purple, but I was just using their stuff. They recommend to use their stuff, so it's like $10 for that bottle. And here's all the, the build sheet on our cam. I think in everything else here and all the instructions, so we'll need those out. And 
what I do with the instructions? Anyway, let's get the camshaft out. I'm gonna put the rest of the stuff back in because we don't need that yet. I'm gonna get the cam out of the box. I'm gonna put our timing set. I'm not ready for that yet. Today, our springs. I'm gonna leave our lifters out. But we're gonna put these guys back in. Get rid of this box off of our workbench. Lots of fun, fun parts to play with here, guys. Nicely packaged. EEA beautiful. Compression rings are in. All right. I've got the oil ring clocked here. I've got it clocked on the other side. Right there. Got the split in the back right above the rod. Two compression rings there and there. So we are clocked where I want to be. Since I already did it to the other side, I'm going to stay even. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply my royal purple assembly lube. I could have screwed this whole ring job up with this synthetic lube. Um, leave in the comments down below what you guys think. I thought I was doing myself a favor by using this stuff. It's a mixed, a mixed batch of uh, worms online, what people are saying. Alright, then we take our ring compressor which I absolutely love using. Not really. I'm not enjoying the whole ring compressing and getting them put in the block. Maybe this one will go smooth for me. Nice and tight. Compressed. All right, guys, let's go over the engine. Now, before we pound that in, it's been a couple days since I've cleaned the engine. I'm going to grab a brand new cotton towel and I'm going to grab my automatic transmission fluid. Give some squirts there. And now I'm going to wipe down the cylinder bore really thoroughly to make sure there's no more dirt. This has already been wiped down several, several times before. See, still dirt coming out of it. We're gonna keep wiping that back and forth until we don't get any more dirt. All right guys, we got our assembly lube on there. Make sure, God damn it. Get that sucker set in there. Too tight. I'm gonna loosen it just a tad. There we go. 
I'm going to go one fast one. We're going to get past the rings. There we go. We're in. We're loaded. You notice I put these hoses on there, Uncle John? My uncle told me to do this. Line up your... You have a stamped one to your stamped one. Oh, shoot, I almost forgot to put assembly lube on it. I've already plastic uh, gauged these. We're good to go. So guys, that is lined up dot to dot, exactly, top compression right now, number one, we're all timed up. Um, this, some people are probably going to oh, advance the cam a little bit or retard the cam a little bit. This cam is set up to be installed dot to dot with this kit. Alright guys, I'm installing the nut and the washer and I'm going to call this the fuel pump wheel. Comment down below, what do you call this guy? This is what turns over your fuel pump. It's all been, it looks dirty, but I, I've scrubbed on it and scrubbed on it and scrubbed on it, and it's as clean as I'm gonna get it. But this is our, uh-oh. It's gonna pull our camshaft towards the front of the engine too. Oop. I'm gonna go find the torque specs for that guy. If you're putting in a new cam and lifter uh, set, you want to put all your brand new lifters. I put it on 1030 conventional motor oil, and I've been watching the bubbles work their way out of them. So we're going to let those sit for 24 hours at minimum. I'm seeing I'm watching lots of bubbles. So yeah, 24 hours minimum on uh, those guys. Maybe we'll go two days before we install those, put the top end together. So, well, guys, I'm gonna call this an episode. We have a short block. It looks amazing. One reason I go with comp cams for their timing chains, especially, is when you get it installed, they are tight. And it was hard to even. It was really hard for me to get the uh, upper wheel, the upper wheel on there when uh, we were putting it on but 
hopefully I installed this guy correctly. I'm worried about that, but I think I did. That's what runs your fuel pump. So anyway, guys, uh, give this video a big thumbs up. Comments go down below. If you see something yeah, I, you didn't like that I did incorrectly, just drop it down below. But I think um, the one, one concern that I have, and after I already had done this, was reading online about it is it's there's mismatched people online that says that this stuff is not good for your putting on your cylinder rings that I should have just used it. just motor oil like conventional motor oil uh, I don't know we will see um, nothing I can do about it now it's loaded and uh, I guess you're gonna oh, it'd be a hard lesson if the, if the rings don't seat but I don't see why that would be um, a problem so all right guys till next time see you here such organ shenanigans